I was 17 and knew nothing of the world. I did not want to remember how he had loved other women before me, but the knowledge often teased me in the threadbare self-confidence of the small hours. I was innocent, but not naive. He stripped me, cool man that he was, as if he were stripping the leaves off an artichoke. His wedding gift clasped around my throat, a choker of rubies two inches wide, like an extraordinarily precious slit throat. At once he closed my legs like a book, and I saw again the rare movement of his lips that meant he smiled. The girl with tears hanging on her cheeks, like stuck pearls, a cunt a split fig below the great globes of her buttocks on which the knotted towels of the cat were about to descend, while a man in a black mast fingered with his free hand his prick that curved upwards like the scimitar he Yet held. Yet I had been infinitely dishevelled, but picture had a caption, virginity. reproof of curiosity. A dozen husbands impulled a dozen brides, while the mewing gulls swung on invisible trapezes in the empty air outside. I had bled. Every man must have one secret. I held my life in my hands amongst those keys. Promise me you'll use all the keys on the ring except the last little one I showed you. I took the forbidden key from the heap and left the others lying there. Absolute darkness and, about me, the instruments of mutilation. Oh, my love, my little love who brought me a white gift of music, he said, almost as if grieving. My little love, you'll never know how much I hate daylight. I ran to the telephone, and the line, of course, was dead, dead as his wives. But, as if the key itself were hurt, the bloody token stuck. It is the key that leads to the kingdom of the unimaginable. A pungent aroma of Russian leather assured me my husband was once again beside me. My virgin of the old Pegios, prepare yourself for martyrdom. What form should it take, I said. Decapitation, he whispered, almost voluptuously. Run to me, run. I have a place prepared for you for your exquisite corpse in my display of flesh. I cast one last desperate glance from the window, and like a miracle, I saw a horse and rider galloping. The Marquis stood transfixed, utterly dazed at a loss. And then it was as though a curious child pushed his centime into the slot and set all in motion. took aim and put a single irreproachable bullet through my husband's head. There is a striking resemblance between the act of love and the ministrations of a torturer, opens my husband's favourite poet.